Hello everyone, welcome to your first lesson on Chinese phonics. Maybe you know that there are Chinese characters, but are you aware that there are also Chinese phonics as well? Today's lesson, I will give a brief overview of what Chinese phonics is about. So, another word for Chinese phonics is called juing. Juing right here means symbols that take note of sound. The ju means description, and the ing means sound. So a description of a sound will be like an alphabet. So another description of what juing is, it is a Chinese alphabet used for pronunciation, which is similar to the hiragana in Japanese. It also breaks down all the Chinese words into 37 sound parts, or 37 juing, or Chinese alphabet. Now, this juing is also an input method editor that is uh, existing in your computer for typing in Chinese. It is denoted by the called uh, by this Chinese traditional new phonetic method. Now, compare this with pinyin, which means uh, you use the Latin alphabet to write Chinese characters. So, why should we learn juing? After learning a few Chinese lessons, you'll come to an observation that some words in pinyin don't sound the way they're written. And here I have two examples. Chun. Here it means size, and it sounds like chun. When the pinyin is actually qi kun. And then right here we have another example, qi gong, which is form of tai chi, sounds like Qi gong when the ping is actually qi gong. So the pros of learning juing is you have this accurate pronunciation, and there is no exception to the rule. It's highly consistent. The combinations make sense, and it's less confusing than the pinyin. The cons of learning this is that there's a steeper learning curve because you have to uh, familiarize yourself with. Uh, these symbols and sounds. So right here I have organized for you a correlation between juing and pinyin. The ones here in yellow are the consonants that are available in juing. And you have right here the blue and pink, which are the vowels in pinyin. And combined together you have 37 different sound parts, or 37 juing. And then right here on the bottom, I have uh, written for you the pinging equivalent of each of these juing. And if you observe carefully, you will discover that for each of these juing, there are multiple pinging for the same juing. So, for example, right here we have this word called wong. For this sound, there are two different ways of writing the pinging. It can be W-E-N-G or O-N-G. And this can be confusing because you can write different pinging and still have the same sound. So we're gonna have a brief overview of the juing system. As we've seen earlier, the juing is divided into consonants, and then we have vowels. And then the consonants are divided between the positions of the lips and tongue. So uh, the vowels are divided between the middle vowel and the bottom vowel. And they are organized in a very specific manner. So right here in the consonants, I'm gonna go through them one time for you to know all the 37 different juing. Here we have b, p, m, f, which are sounds produced to the lips. And you have the tone le, which are sounds produced with the tip of the tongue. And you have ge ke he, which is produced through the back of the tongue. And you have ji chi xi, which is produced through the surface of the tongue. And you have zhi chi shi zhi, which are produced through the curly tongue. And you have zi chi si, which are produced through the teeth. And then for vowels, you have the middle vowel, which can be combined with the bottom vowels to make a new sound. So this middle vowel is very special, it's in blue right here. 
So E, U, U are the middle vowels. And then the other vowels uh, right here, A, O, O, A is a single vowel. I, A, O, O is double vowel. And then you have An, An, Ang, Ong, which are nasal vowels. And you have Er, which is the curly tongue vowel. So now we can see how chewing is used in context. As you can see here, these are two textbooks for elementary first grade students. The only difference is this one is used 30 years ago and this one is used recently. As you can see on the left side, there's a Chinese character and on the right side, there is the chewing. And then in a newer version of the textbook, they don't teach you the Chinese character, but they teach you the chewing alone. So right here, uh, we can briefly go through the components of this chewing. Right on top, we have the consonant, and in the middle, we have the middle vowel, and on the bottom, we have the bottom vowel. And then right here, I haven't talked about this. This is an intonation mark. And combined together, they make one chewing. And with these chewing, we can actually read the text. So right here, I want to explain to you that if you use chewing, you're gonna use traditional Chinese characters. And if you use pinging, you're gonna use simplified Chinese characters. And the difference between these two is that the traditional Chinese characters were preserved um, before Mao Zedong's uh, cultural revolution. So this original word right here means blood relations or family and if you look at the simplified version of this word, it's missing this part. Let me show you. It's missing this radical, which means to see. So as you can see here in this new Chinese, simplified Chinese character, it means you can't see your blood relations with family. The second example I have here is I, which means love. And the traditional Chinese character right here has a heart here. This word right here is a radical for heart. And in the simplified version, there is no heart. And instead of, um, instead of this bottom figure, you get the word friendship at the bottom. And then the last example I have here is mian. Mian means noodles. And uh, as you can see here, the traditional Chinese character is, um, has the word wheat in it. And this one doesn't have wheat in its noodles. So that's how you can tell the difference between traditional and simplified Chinese characters. So here's the end of today's phonics lesson. And if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. And hopefully I will see you next time in our next lesson. See you.